The modern classic motorcycle sector is booming at the moment. But in order to be successful in this highly competitive sector, you need one thing. You must have some heritage and some history. You've got to have a bit of weight behind you in order to be successful. Other than that, you have to decide where to position yourself within the market. And BMW with the R9T and the R9T Scrambler have gone extremely high end. Ducati and Triumph have gone mid to high end. And Royal Enfield, they occupy the lower end of the market, the sub 7K sector. And there's no real competition for them. Or is there? The Fantic Caballero. I wouldn't blame you if you've never heard of this model or this brand before. Let me give you a bit of history. In 1968, Italian brand Fantic was formed. They produced predominantly off-road focused motorcycles until in 1995 production ceased and they went out of business. In 2005, they came back into business, but they focused almost entirely on absolutely off-road focused machines until the year 2018 when they came back with what they hoped to be a mainstream competitor within the classic, modern classic retro sector. And that is this, the Fantic Caballero. Now, if we're talking about some history, some real weight behind a brand, how's this? For off-road world championships, Fantic won the 1985, 1986 and 1988 championships. They also won the Scottish six day trials seven times. Is that enough history for you? So they absolutely deserve their place within this modern classic sector. Let's get down to the bike itself. This exact model, the Fantic Caballero Scrambler, it is a 450 cc bike it's 150 kilos 40 horsepower single cylinder water cooled i am six foot one and 80 kilos just to give you a rough idea on my size overall seat height perfectly manageable it's a very very good bend in my legs and the first thing that i notice tiny proportions really tiny the wheelbase is just about as small as I've ever experienced before. And with that, very lightweight. Monica, if I just get you to stand here, I'll show you the lean angle and handling here because it feels, feels quite similar to a toy with its dimensions and its low, very, I mean, it's just so, so easy to just pick up, chuck around, and that is, and I'll get to this later for handling and chuckability, but you know, that's what you want when you're looking for this scrambler kind of bike. And Fantic, they do, they market this as a bike that is just as good off-road as, as it is on-road. And that's a big claim because there are a lot of other biking brands that create scramblers, but when you're looking at heavier bikes, 200 kilos or something plus, they really are too heavy for off-roading use. This at 150 kilograms, this is a very, very different animal. Right, the looks, classic 1970s scrambler styling with beautiful touches everywhere. Gold forks, single headlamp with the grill as standard to protect that. Very, very small little fairing on the front. Handlebar protector there, nicely positioned mirrors so when I'm sitting on it. For one, the bend of my legs is nice, but very short distance to the handlebars as well. If I get you to come on this side, Monica. Beautifully designed. Red tank, just a little bit of fairing here. Very, very stripped back. Now, the engine is a Chinese built engine. It's built in China, it's then sent to Italy where it's assembled and all put together. The frame is Italian made, so it is it is an Italian-made bike, all put together in the factory, the headquarters in Italy, but the engine comes from China. However, Chinese engines actually have a fairly decent reputation for reliability, and if it's put together with the Italians, I would say you're in fairly good hands. Love the detailing on here, just on the side of the exhaust. That's got the aftermarket arrows that you can buy for an optional extra. Beautiful quality seat, just perfectly retro. It's on the hard side, so touring 
you may need to put a cushion on there but it looks the absolute business with two grab rails there for a pannier monica's been on the back for about 15 minutes and it's perfectly decent for short rides you're not going to want to tour too up but coffee shop runs no issue at all and i love this plastic rear fairing but it shows how far biking brands are coming you know this is straight out of the box a very very good looking rear end with two small indicators very minimal rear light i don't think you need to do anything to that at all with this is what you see here tiny beautifully stealth instrument gauge there are no riding modes or anything like that but you do you do actually get a fuel gauge on there and a rev counter as well but as minimal as you like right that's it a small perfectly manageable pocket sized bike with and we'll get it out on the roads to check but 40 horsepower what is 40 horsepower like in reality to live with on a day-to-day -day basis let's go and find out The Fantic Caballero Scrambler starts from £6,700 and my aim for today to find out where does this fit within the modern classic sector and is there actually any room for another modern classic brand to come into the market? Ride-wise, I've actually been incredibly impressed. That 40 horsepower, if we compare it, for example, to the Himalayan or the Scram 1-1, the other Royal Enfield. That is a 400cc engine with 24 horsepower. This is a 450 engine with 40 horsepower. And it's been quite eye-opening seeing the difference of that 16 horsepower. What that 16 horsepower means, if I compare it to the 400cc Royal Enfields, is they are relatively asthmatic and gutless. There's no surge in power anywhere with those bikes there is a genuine surge in power in this bike in first gear second gear and even third gear you get that proper when you open it up completely whoosh and you're you're really holding on and going on to the motorways even with monica on the back got to 75 miles an hour with no issue at all it would have carried on but that's 75 miles an hour there was no struggle there at all and there aren't the unpleasant vibrations pummeling through your feet on the foot pegs that you often get with a single it's actually a perfectly pleasant place to be you could you could tour with this and i believe there are actually pannier setups with this so the engine is powerful enough to be to be durable enough to tour, to take two up, to take some panniers on, and also just keep up with some friends if you're out on a Sunday afternoon blast. Rear comfort wise. It's perfectly pleasant actually. It's not the softest seat and it's quite a short seat, so you can see I'm right on the end there, but that is a very easy bike to get on and off and it's a very pleasant place to be. I'm not unpleasantly higher than the rider would be. It's very nice. It's got the Arrow exhaust. Now this is an optional extra. It's not cheap. I think it's about a thousand pounds, but if you 
remap it properly from Fantic, it'll give you an extra eight horsepower. That is a lot. That puts it into Royal Enfield Interceptor territory. However, for the sake of argument for this bike, this is still only 40 horsepower. They didn't tweak it to 48, just so when customers test ride it, they know the real feeling of the 40 horsepower engine. Listen to this. Sounds very nice, it's very throaty for me personally. It's a little bit too loud if I'm going on the open road. I would definitely be needing earplugs for that, so I'd be tempted just to leave the exhaust as standard. But the 150 kilo weight of this bike, it makes it really incredibly, for one, incredibly easy to ride. There is about a five second learning curve with this bike. You jump on, you hit the road, and you can really, really give it some. The beautiful thing about engines with about 40 horsepower with such a light weight is that you can push them so close to the limit. You can manhandle a bike like this when you're going around bends from left to right. You really feel like you can grab it by the scruff of the neck. It's never going to bite back in an unpleasant way. This is a bike that, I honestly feel I could take off-road and it would be a good tool for off-roading. When you're off-roading, something I've learnt many times after taking these modern classic scramblers and attempting to off-road them, there's one thing that matters more than anything. There's one thing that matters way more than power, way more than electronic aids, which are, relatively speaking, when off-roading, completely, completely useless. The only thing that matters for off-roading is, of course, some underbike protection, a little bit of ground clearance, but lightweight. And this represents around about a 50 kilo weight saving when compared to a lot of its rivals, and that is very significant. So we just found a nice coffee shop to, well, grab a couple of coffees and look at the competition that the Caballero faces. But before we go in, a couple of things I've noticed while riding. The engine, 450cc, it's perfectly decent, it's perfectly quick enough, but it's no award winner of an engine. It doesn't have that feeling of strength and durability. I mean, it, it's perfectly good, but it feels like you're, you're constantly pushing the revs high up in the rev range. It just, it feels a little bit raspy. Plus, a few of the plastics around the bike, for example, these side panels here, and even the stickers on the side panels, they do feel like they've been made down to a budget. This as well, just the stickers on it and the plastic itself. And if you come around to the side moniker, just the rear mudguard plastic as well. It, parts of it do feel, and the plastic here as well. It, they feel like they've been built slightly down to a budget. If, for example, I am being introduced to a Royal Enfield Interceptor coming in at 6,000 pounds, which I know is not a scrambler, but it's 700 pounds less than that. You put an Interceptor in front of me and I am absolutely blown away amazed. I'm amazed by the build quality, I'm amazed by the strength of the engine, I'm amazed by the package that you get for the money. This, I think it's a fair price for the money, and that is a significant difference. Royal Enfield have now come along and changed the game, so this is a perfectly reasonably priced package with a reasonable level of quality. The only slight problem with this is that Royal Enfield are changing the game as we speak on a continuous basis.
parking up looking at it. It's a superb looking bike. Really, the styling, I mean, what else do you expect from an Italian designed and made motorcycle? Stunning good looking bike, really. It's perfectly proportioned. The, the right level of detail in the right place, you know, those gold forks, the spoked wheels, the, the perfectly chosen Pirelli tyres, the, the flat handlebars, everything about it is, is absolutely on point style-wise. But let's look at the competitors. What's out there in the market that's a genuine competitor and is there even a genuine competitor? If we start off with a bike that I've never ridden, but I have ridden its very, very similar brother. That is the Royal Enfield Scram 411, the new Royal Enfield. That is a £4,600 bike. So it is over £2,000 cheaper than the Fantic Caballero. However, it's got 24 horsepower and it's 185 kilos. So it's 35 kilos more than the Fantic and it's a full 16 horsepower less. So that is a much, much stronger engine than the Royal Enfield. So you'll pay a lot more, but you'll get significantly more performance. Something interesting then happens. We then have a jump from 4,600 pounds for the Scram all the way up to 9,000 pounds. And the next bike in my list is the Ducati Scrambler. The Ducati Scrambler is an 800cc bike and it's got 47 horsepower, but it's 9,000 pounds. So you will save 2,300 pounds for that and you only get an extra seven horsepower of the Ducati. However, I will admit the Ducati is a significantly better built machine than the Caballero. It's a more premium bike, more premium finish. You then get up to the likes after that, the likes of the Triumph Scrambler. Now that's 9,600 pounds, but that's a big, big jump up in performance. And in fact, that's in a completely different league with 64 horsepower. But one other left field one I'll do, the CCM. The CCM is 10,600 pounds. It's 145 kilos and it's 41 horsepower. So it's incredibly similar to that, but that's at the premium end of the scale at 3,000 pounds more than the Fantix. So what do I learn from those figures? I think there's a gap in the market for this, a gap between the Royal Enfields and the Ducati, bang in the middle for that little Fantic. Well, I think Fantic have done it. I think they've found a little niche within the modern classic scrambler segment. Look, the, the Triumphs, the BMWs, the Ducatis, they are all much, much better built motorcycles and they're all also more powerful and the Royal Enfields are much, much cheaper. However, this offers a genuinely off-road focused proposition. This, I would argue, feels like the most authentic scrambler of the lot. When you take all of the ingredients into account, it's also fairly priced, it looks superb, and it's extremely light-hearted. So, if you're on the market for a scrambler and you want something slightly more focused than the current crop of competition, definitely come and have a look at this because this offers something quite unique. Thank you to Crazy Horse for lending me this beautiful bike for the day. That is the motorcycle destination dealership from my previous video. So if you are on the market for any number of modern classics, cruiser style bikes, and also looking for some new biking gear, it's a very good place to go and check out. They've also got a coffee shop with a great range of food as well. So I highly recommend going to check them out. Any owners? of the Fantic Caballero and anyone who's interested in the bike, I would be fascinated by your thoughts on this because it's not yet what I would class as a properly mainstream bike, although they do have ambitions for that. So let me know your thoughts on the bike. Thank you so much everyone for coming along. Please do give the video a like, subscribe to the channel and we'll see you in the next one.